In this video, we're going to be talking about CSS borders, margins, and padding. We're going to start with the CSS borders. Basically, with the CSS border properties, you can define a style rule for the border of any particular HTML element. When we're defining rules for the border element of an element, we can actually manipulate the color of the border. We can manipulate the style and also the width of the border. So let me quickly show you how to do this. Right here in custom.css, let us start with this image. Let's say we want to specify the border for this image. So right here we can say border. We want this tie to be solid. And then we want the color to be red. And then we want the width to be two pieces. Right, you can see our border right here for this particular element. There are different options that we can specify for this tie. We can say, for instance, it should be dashed. You can see that the border style is now dashed. We can also specify this in 3D. You can say it should be groove, which is 3D style. Then refresh. And there are a lot of options that we can actually specify here, like reach. The most commonly used would be the solid style. And next for the color, if we don't want to specify the color here, we can actually come down here and say border color and then specify the color of the border. This will give us the flexibility of actually using more than one color for our border. So let's say here I want to say green and here I want to say black and here I want to say blue. So the way this works is that the four corners of the border, we have different colors. The very first one here, red, we apply to the top of the border. Why the green here, we apply to the right of the border. The black here, we apply to the bottom of the border. And then the blue here, we apply to the left hand side of the border. So let's quickly refresh this on the browser. And right here, we see the blue on the left. We have the black here at the bottom. We have the green at the right hand side and we have the red at the top. Okay, let's increase the border here to 10 and then refresh the page. The same thing will be true for the width. So if we don't want to specify the width here, so we can also say the border width. We want the top to be 30. Next is going to be the right hand side. We want the right hand side to be 15. And then we want the bottom to be 20. And then we want the left to be 15. Okay, let's just make the bottom 30. You can see that the width of the border is not different. At the top we have 30, the bottom 30, the left and the right 15, 15 each. Next we are going to talk about CSS margins. Basically we use the CSS margin property to create space around various elements. We can actually set space for the top, right, left and the bottom margin of any element. So let's quickly see how to do this. So we're going to target our menu this time. Let's create an ID here and call this menu. And then in our custom.css, we're going to target that ID. We can say margin top 69. Let's save and refresh. All right, you can see that from the top, it has actually created a space here. Mind you that the space created here is actually between this dev holding the menu and the main container dev. If you look at the HTML code here, you can see that we have a division here, which was the menu. And we have a division here, which is the main container. So we are actually saying we want the space between this division and this division, the top of it to be 69 pieces. So we can actually come here and say margin this time, let's say margin bottom, let's say 69. All right, refresh. You can see that the space between this div and the H1 tag here is now 69. All right, so we can also say margin left. Let's use 69. You can see that we have actually created a margin from the left hand side here. We can also specify the margin from the right. So say margin right, also 69. We don't see the effect because there is enough space from the right hand side here. If you look at the code here, you can see that my test editor is also giving me this int that I'm actually not optimizing the margin attribute. So I can just remove everything here. 
remove all of this and uh, use the shorthand if i leave this like this it's going to be exactly the same thing so the top right bottom and left we all have 69 pieces so if we refresh we're going to have the exact same thing here another way to do this would be to use the formula that we learned before which is 69 px 69 px and 69 px to easily remember the shorthand formula just remember that it goes in a clockwise direction so from the top then to the right and then to the bottom and then to the left so this is going to be the exact same thing that we did previously where it may now become tricky is if we are actually specifying just three so if we are specifying three values then it is going to be different so let's make this to be 200 okay so this is going to remain the same it's going to be for the top then the next one is going to be for the right and the left so right and left this time is going to be 200 and then the bottom is going to be 69 so when we have three values specified here this will be top this will be right and left and this will be the bottom let's refresh and see this can see that the left hand side has moved far now because we changed the value to 200 and also if we have just two values here say we remove the 69 now the top and bottom is going to be 69 and then the right and left is going to remain 200 so let's let's make this uh, 300 so we can see the effect and then let's make this uh, 150 can see the difference that the right and the left is now 300 the top and the bottom is now a 150 pieces and the last thing that we want to talk about here is the centering of elements to center an element we need to set the margin to auto so just set this to auto and uh, most of the time you specify a margin of zero put a space and say auto or you just leave this as auto so this is going to automatically put the div at the center of the container all right so nothing is happening here because we did not specify a size for this div so if we come here and uh, say the width of this div is 200 Remember, this is a div that is holding the menu item. Come here, we have this div, which is our menu. So if we refresh, you can see that the div has been moved to the center of the page. Once we set the margin property to auto, the element which we apply that margin to will be automatically centered to the screen. Right, so I'm going to get rid of all this. And I'm just going to give 10 PS for my margin. Next, we're going to talk about CSS padding properties. Just like the margin properties, we use the padding properties to specify how much space we want between the content of a particular element and the border of that element. Remember that for margins, we are generating space around elements, but for paddings, we are generating space between the content of the element and the border of that specific element. We go over to our custom.css and let's just quickly set a border for this particular element. So we're going to say border should be 2px, should be solid, should be green. All right, if you see here that the content of this particular dev is actually just stick to the very beginning of the dev, there is no space from the left, there's no space at the top, and there's no space at the bottom. And if we were to have content floating to the entire width of the div, it will also stack to the right hand side here. So we can use the padding property to create space between the div and the content which is inside the div. So let's do that so we're going to say padding we can say padding for the top let's say the top should be 10 let's refresh okay so now we have a space at the top the same thing we can say the bottom 10 and here we have a space at the bottom and also we can say the padding to the left here we can say 15 and we can also say padding to the right So you can see that there is now sufficient space between the border and the content in this particular element. So just like we can use shorthand property for both the border margins, we can also use shorthand properties for paddings. So right is 15, the bottom is 10, and the left is 15. So we'll get rid of this. 
and then we set this to be padding. Right, you can see that we still have the exact same thing here. So you remember when we talked about the margin, we said that if we have three values specified here, this would be for the top, this would be for the right and the left, and this would be for the bottom. So the same thing applies for the padding here. And then if we have just two values specified, this would be for the top and the bottom, and this would be for the right and the left. And then if we just have one value here, then the top, right, bottom, and the left will all be 10. 